<laughs> oh, yes! We did it! What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on everybody and welcome to yet another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Uh, we are jumping into Standard. Uh, I haven't played Standard in a long time. I've actually been really enjoying Historic and I didn't really want to push out of it because there's so many things you can do in Historic. There's a lot of different uh, strategies, things like that, that I really enjoy that uh, I just was kind of getting caught up in it. Um, obviously with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms though, we did get some new cards for Standard uh, that I thought we should try out and that's what we're going to be doing today so this deck list is one that um <clears throat> i think is just a really solid deck list this is not an original creation this is by mtg arena original deck list who builds amazing decks and is very very fun to follow if you don't follow them please do uh they do release their own content um and they're absolutely fantastic but I thought I would give this deck a try because it really piqued my interest. It uh, it has some life gain elements to it. It's got some just really solid plays on curve uh, and skipping the curve a little bit. And then some really nice high end, of course, with Foreign Clex and Ashaya. So the uh, the new cards here that we're trying out are these class cards. So Cleric class in particular uh, gains us a little bit of extra life, can put some 1-1 counters around and then bring stuff back from the graveyard, which is obviously very relevant. And then Ranger class. So when this enters the battlefield, you create a 2-2 whenever you attack put a 1-1 counter on attacking creature and a target attacking creature and then if you get it to level three you can look at the top card of your library and if it's a creature you can play it uh very very solid in my opinion just super strong cards we've seen these in historic as well and doing very very well uh additionally we do have a couple of rampers uh just bear sentinel i hope i'm saying that correctly and tangled florahedron uh just really nice little rampers we've got uh the new innkeeper as well which is here to gain us some life does also ramp us as well for two mana this does have a lot of value uh clarion spirit whenever you cast your second spell each turn you get a 1-1 one, one. obviously really nice in tandem with these uh these classes in particular the cleric class because uh especially if you've got the innkeeper out you can gain a life that gains you an extra life and then whenever you gain a life you put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature so it really kind of goes off uh righteous valkyrie gains us obviously a ton of life just an absolute powerhouse card Felidar Retreat is interesting because uh, we do have a lot of lands in our deck and we do have a Shia. So anytime a creature comes down, if we have a Shia down, it counts as a land as well, uh, which triggers this, but also then can trigger the life gain off of the innkeeper, that kind of thing. Toski is here. Anytime uh, a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card, which is going to help us double up and hit that Clarion Spirit more often. And then, of course, as we talked about, some really nice top end with Ashaya, but then also with Vorinclex, which shuts down a lot of the opposing uh, Planeswalkers, things like that, strategies, but also is just a 6-6 six, six Trample Haster that's massive and does a lot, to, a lot of damage. So very, very sick deck overall. I'm really excited to try this one out. I've only played one game with it, and honestly, that's the first game of Standard I have played in a very long time uh so this is going to be a learning experience if nothing else to see what the what the meta holds for us what kinds of things we can expect to see and i'm really excited about it so without further ado guys let's jump into three games oh one other thing i forgot to mention we released another video today the beginning of that video probably doesn't have anything in it i actually just thought about this as we started this video so i haven't actually gone to check that was my bad that's just an editing mistake on my end but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed it regardless let's go ahead and jump into this one all right guys here we are for game number one and the question is do we want to keep this uh the nice thing is with the innkeeper the clarion spirit is actually playable so i am going to keep this and we're going to see how this one goes uh don't have super uh, a super good gauge about standard right now like i said i have not been playing uh and so we are going to take this as a big learning experience for everybody uh and hopefully have a good time doing it but we'll we'll obviously see as we go through here Maul is very good. Obviously, they do get to then swing in, uh, which is great on their side. I'm glad we have the innkeeper just to hopefully get us a little bit further down the road here. So, okay, what can we do? Can we play two spells this turn? Um, the trick is no. I don't think we can, right? We can play an innkeeper and get a setup for next turn, which I think is probably just going to be the best bet here. Um, that does give us a treasure and gains us a life. 
Uh, and then we can do this. So we can play the Clarion Spirit if we would like. The trick is then we might not have mana to do what we'd like to the following turn. I think the, the play here is to pass. I'm not attacking with the Innkeeper either. I probably should, but I, uh, I do want to keep everything around as best we can. That's obviously quite scary. What do we want? Righteous Valkyrie would be amazing. Um, all right, so we've got some interesting potential plays here. I mean, we can play the Clarion Spirit, which does give us a token because then we can play Toski as well. I do think I kind of like that play. Um, I don't know if it's the best play in the world, but it does give us a little bit more longevity. Uh, and so I do think it's worth it. An indestructible threat against Inspiring Veteran as well is just kind of nice. Gains us some life. We're not going to attack here, but now we've got a little blocker. Um, can they good game us? Can they beat us this turn? Um, oh, very nice. So now I'm kind of wishing we had just played the Vorinclex, to be brutally honest, but um, that's okay. Let's do this. Uh, do we want to block here as well? Um, no, I don't think we do. Let's Let's just take the two. Uh, or excuse me, take that, and then, ooh, unfortunate land draws here. Uh, we're just not getting much, unfortunately, so. Uh, we can attack with two things here and hopefully get a little bit of extra. I'm actually going to do that. We do really need a land, or uh, just a play here, but a land in particular would be nice, so let's see if we can get it. Well, I mean, it is a land. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> It's going to gain us some more life. And now we do have a 9-9. Nine, nine. I mean, that's pretty good. You know, like, it's not bad. Um, the opponent can very easily just outpace us here. But we have gained a lot of life. I mean, that is worth noting that the life that we've gained is really relevant here. Um, and we can obviously block something here with a Shio, which is quite good. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I've got no idea. This is obviously the big problem card, that Vengeful Knight. Ah, okay. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's tap here to play this. It's going to gain us a little extra life. Um, this has to attack. This doesn't have to attack, but can. Uh, the question is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So they'd have to like triple block to kill this, and we have a backup Ashaya. So I'm actually okay with letting this go here if they decide to. Um, but very importantly, I mean, they are trading off some threats here. And we just have a 6-6 six, six lying in wait. So I think that's okay. Um, they don't get counters thanks to Vorinclex, so that doesn't do anything. Um, I mean, for all their damaging, we are still at 18. So I'm just saying, worth noting, we're, we're doing okay here. Um... I'm very curious to see how this goes. This is the scary card. I mean, very clearly that's the scary card, but we do have Cleric class that we can use to bring back the Clarion Spirit, theoretically. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. Oh, and there is a white source as well. That's actually really good. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. It's gonna bring back the, this. And then we can start really kind of going off here. So I'm going to put the counters here on Toski um, because it is an indestructible threat that they have to deal with. And there we go, guys. We got the win. Wow. What a game. Uh, very, very strong start. Perfect. So let's go into game two. And here we are, guys, for game number two. And this is a great start. So we've got a nice one, two, into three with the Felidar Retreat as well. Absolutely perfect. So let's make sure we do this in the correct order. Play that Sentinel out. This is just a nice card to have out on turn one. Not only is it a one, two uh, with reach that can block, but it also obviously provides mana, which is great. Uh, let's do this. Let's see. So we can't really do both here. I think the play is going to just be the spirit. Um, and then no attacks. Oh, we can do both. I'm sorry. Of course we can. We can tap here. That actually gives us a 1-1 one, one as well, so that's perfect. Uh, I am I forgot that this can tap this, so that makes a lot of sense. That gets us a really nice little setup here for this turn, where ideally we, we could just play this too. That's also very good, but I think we're going to play the Righteous Valkyrie out here. 
Um, and I think just attack in. We're going to get some damage in this turn. So next turn, obviously, anything that we play should gain us some life, which is quite good for us. Um, ooh, I like this. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to tap this. We're going to tap you, because I don't particularly want to risk it. Um, we're going to play this. That's going to give us a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, and then we can attack in here. So next turn, we can then Toski and start refilling our hand. Uh, but now we are well set up with whatever we draw, which is kind of the trick here. And I wanted to get to that point as quickly as we could. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, let's do this. Might as well. Um, <laughs> let's do this. Um, all right. So we don't gain any life from our creatures. That's the uh, important thing to note right now. So let's do this. They all have vigilance. So this is essentially a free attack uh, and just a lot of damage coming their way. Um, dang, that feels really good. All right, so now we're going to draw a bunch of cards. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really good. Um, I'll throw this out. Let's uh let's try and get the ranger class going here. Um I'll tap this for the time being. That also gives us a nice little 1-1 one, one and a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, come on. Like what a board state this is. Uh against a, a lone Toski. A lone Toski. Feeling pretty good, not gonna lie. Um, and there's the win. We did it! Yes, two in a row. Alright, well, guys, let's uh let's move to game three. Let's see if we can get a nice three and oh. And here we are, guys, for our third and final game with, I think, just the best deck ever. Um, do I like this hand, though? I think the answer is actually no. Um, we don't have any green. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that one back. And this is okay. I mean, it's not great, but it's I mean, it's got a nice one too. Um, with the Felidar retreat coming later on, Prosperous Innkeeper does get us to turn four on turn three, so that's very much a viable play. I think it's worth it. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's see what they, they've got. They obviously have black, so I'm assuming removal is going to be a very regular thing here, but the Felidar retreats are really good against like point and shoot removal um, because we essentially get a creature for just basically anything. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to decline for now. I don't really know. Probably not worth it, but... We're going to auto pay here, get this thing out. And then next turn, we obviously have quite a good play. Um, this gains us life, so it kind of mitigates the life that they're giving us with this Wither Crown. Plus, we can just sacrifice it. Like, I don't know. It doesn't really matter that much to us. So uh, again, I'm going to decline. We're going to take the one because we're going to get more out here in a second. So let's do this. Let's put a 2-2 two -two out. Uh, and let's throw... <sighs> do we want the Felidar Retreat? I think we do. This just gives us more upside on the next turn. So I'm I'm all too happy to kind of keep that around. They put this on a, a life gain mechanic, which is kind of interesting. I don't know that I like that play. Um, plus, I mean, truth be told, we can just sacrifice it at some point later on, and that's fine. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh... I'm gonna do that. I think that makes sense. Well, we are very, our creatures are very expendable, to be clear. Uh, so like, we can just get tons more if they want. They can discard our stuff and then make us sack creatures, but truth be told, if we get like a Righteous Valkyrie, we can kind of stop the Rankle from being a problem. Why didn't they kill? I'm surprised they didn't kill the, the two, two. Um, that's fine though. They're gonna discard Toski. It's not great for us, but it's not the end of the world because we've got the Felidar Retreat. So even if we just draw a land, we're in really good shape, or even better, uh, draw this. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's play you out. Um, I do think, obviously, we attack because we can't block the Rankle anyway, so it's not really worth waiting on. Um, and then we'll see what they've got. I mean, they've got three cards in hand. They've got a graveyard-filled deck, so this is going to be a bit scary. Okay, uh, sure. Truthfully, though, they're making us sack. If they make us sack a creature, we take out the 2-2 and then they don't get it. 
Um, but they're not going to make us do anything. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, okay. So we can do this, or we can just Righteous Valkyrie. I think we have to Righteous Valkyrie. We have to get cards out of our hand as best we can. Um, we're not going to attack here. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a permanent or discards a permanent. Okay, so we need to keep cards out of our hand. For sure. Oh, they get the Righteous Valkyrie now. That's scary. That's very scary. Uh, so we are up against some major opposition this time for sure. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Obviously going to take some hits here. I'm not going to block. We're just going to take it. If they want to make us sacrifice a permanent, it's not good for us, but it's obviously not the end of the world either. I mean, we'll see. Um, if we get a land, we get two more 2-2s, two -twos, and then we can just, like, multi-block here. Oh, well, hello you. Um, I mean, yeah, we play it out. And then we play this out. Um, no attacks. Funny that we're not drawing any lands. Um... Now that we've got two Felidar retreats, we kind of need the lands. Uh, ooh, that's very solid by the opponent. Um, this Righteous Valkyrie is going to be a problem on their side because they are gaining life. So we do have to keep that in mind that as they're as they're gaining life, this is going to get significantly better. Okay. Um, we could triple block, uh, but I think that's a bad idea. I think we need to do this, though. Um and maybe this. They're gonna get the Sentinel, I guess. Which isn't great, but I do think we kind of have to block a little bit here. Oh man, we are just bad luck. Um, Very bad luck. Let's do this. Let's then do this. So what this means is we actually get a counter on the Righteous Valkyrie, which just means that it can kill the Rankle if we need it to, but if they have any amount of life gain, then they, if they just play a creature, most likely they can get to Righteous Valkyrie and uh, buff up their board. So I don't know. I don't feel very strongly that we can win this for sure, but we're going to do the best we can. Um, next turn, if we do draw a land, we get two cats, plus we can use that for the Cleric class, uh, which does seem pretty good. Okay. I mean, we can triple block here, try and kill it, uh, which I think is just the best thing we can do. It's not great. They can't kill the Righteous Valkyrie as it stands, so we get rid of Turgrid at the very least. But now can they just kill us? No, they can't. Oh, good. Oh, that's very good. Okay, so we're going to get a Cat Beast, another Cat Beast. We're then going to do this, uh, which then we can pull back. Oh, I don't know what to pull back. Um, to be clear, we had to play the lamb first, otherwise we would have done this in a reverse order. Oh, I don't know. Um, I guess it's just this. It's not very exciting, but I feel like that's just the best bet. We're gonna put the counter there so that can kill here. I mean, we are trying very hard to hang in there. That is all I can say. They drew a land. They hadn't played a land the last couple turns, so I'm intrigued to see what they might have here. Um, if they attack with anything, we have to block. This is, this is a good game. Oh, they didn't attack. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, so we're going to play green. It's going to trigger here and here. It's going to gain us some life, which is massive for us. Uh, let's put the counters here on this one. <clears throat> uh, ooh, maybe we should have done that differently, but that's okay. Uh, we definitely should have done that differently. So what we should have done is put them on one of the other ones that could attack. I was thinking we're not going to attack this turn, but we should have put it on one that could have, so we could actually have attacked in there. There's an Ashaya, uh, which is really good. <laughs> So let's do it. I'm gonna throw a Shia out there. Uh, let's put a 1 1 counter on everything. Let's put another 1 1 counter on everything. And let's put a counter here. That's pretty solid. Okay, so this is coming in. I mean, 
truth be told, I think most everything is going to be going in. So let's do it. They all have vigilance, except this we're not attacking with. So this is going to get them out of Righteous Valkyrie range, theoretically, uh, which is huge. Um, they do have graveyard interaction, so I'm very much assuming that they can bring some stuff back here. Uh, but they do, I mean, they are in a position where blocking is pretty crucial. Um, nice. All right. We might still be in this game. Uh, wow, what a game. Oh, I'm so excited. And they give up. Oh, yes. We did it. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, let's uh, let's chat about this one. Wow. Okay. What a deck. What? My goodness. What a deck. Okay. I am amazed. First of all, I I think the first two games we very handily took over. I don't really think that was a big issue. I think that third game was amazing. Uh, the fact that we were able to dig ourselves out of that. I mean, we were at a very, very low life total. They clearly got unlucky on some draws. Let me be clear, because they didn't play anything for like a very like long span of turns. It was like four or five turns. They didn't do anything. So I'm assuming they just really didn't draw much, uh, which is fine. Uh, and obviously worked in our favor, but what a way to take over a game. I mean, creature after creature after counter after counter. I mean, that was amazing. So I love this deck. If you are playing standard, I highly recommend it. Granted, again, keep in mind, guys, I'm saying that off of a very small subset, but we did get 3-0 and with this one. So seems very strong. MTG original deck list knows what they're doing, man. I'm just saying, if you don't know who they are, please go follow them because they do a phenomenal job with their deck building. Uh, and I absolutely love this one. So thank you so much to them for creating this deck. Thank you to all of you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I cannot wait to jump into the challenge week again tomorrow. Uh, so do stay tuned for that. But until then, guys, I'll see you. Have a great day. And I cannot wait. I can't wait to see who wins Challenge Week. Let's see who it is.